Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Hi, I'm Mike Kapler for the Growing in Grace podcast. With me, of course, my friend and, um, well, you know him, Joel Brzezinski, <laughs> former importer, exporter, architect, and marine biologist. All those things and more. <laughs> well, plenty more. And all those things some and of, less. Some of them we can't talk about. All at the same time. I'm more than that and I'm less than that all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> They just, just uh, call me Les Nessman. We were just talking about the weather. You know, that's a thing that people do. They just talk about the weather. And when really it comes down to... That's, see, that's not, we don't talk about the weather a whole lot, you know. We talk about, like, uh, the internet and how fast our speeds are and good deals that we can get on various, uh, like, routers and things. But other than that, we talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been doing that. Well, it's the main reason why I got married back in the day is because I I didn't want to date anybody anymore and have to talk about the weather. (laughs) So so guess what? That's a good reason. 30 some years later, what do do, do my wife and I talk about? Hey, it's only going to be in the 70s today. (laughs) See, you'll always have that. It's a good fallback. (laughs) Um, I guess if we start disagreeing with each other here on the podcast, (laughs) We'll, we'll we'll bring up the weather and then we can move on. <laughs> that, that, that'll be that'll be our secret signal to each other. But oh, it looks like it might rain today. <laughs> I'll keep that. I'm going to write that one down because I know that there's stuff that you're going to say. No, and it do, it doesn't matter really when it comes down to it. Like like you have said many times, and we've both said many times. You and I agree on on so much, and it's not just. We're not just forcing ourselves to agree with the other one. It's just like we've grown in this stuff together. Um, and at the same time, I'm sure there are things that uh, we don't see eye to eye on. We haven't necessarily talked about a lot of those things, um, but it's okay. I mean, it's like what we've been talking about. Um, just like there are however many thousands of different denominations, there's, there's no two people who are going to agree on everything. And that's okay. Um, there are some big disagreements that people have. And it's, you know, Paul had some disagreements with people and led them to parting ways. Um, there are times when people can have big disagreements and they can just say, you know what, we disagree on that. And it's okay. Um, everybody's different. Every, how people handle agreements and disagreements is all different. Um, somehow for um, 18 and a half years, we've been able to do this podcast and it's been a really really good thing for both of us and it was even a decade or so before that that you and I actually started talking about all this stuff together so we've grown in a lot of this together so a lot of what we have to say it's just like you said last week we just kind of work off of each other and and have a good conversation and the listener whoever's listening you get to be part of of what we're talking about and if we end up uh, disagreeing on something that's okay it's it's not the end of the world as we know it well and with some of the stuff we started talking about last week we, we may run into some of that and and it's okay so uh, joel can come up with an oppose uh, an opposing point of view it doesn't necessarily make one of us right or wrong uh like you said we're we're just talking and and usually we're on the same page there may be times where one of us needs to say, here's how I see it. I see it a little bit differently. And and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Paul said this to the Corinthians. Um, I disagree. First Corinthians chapter. Say what? I disagree. Oh, no. <laughs> no, oh, he, did, I mean, he did say it's it. It's going to be sunny it's today. Documented. It's going to be sunny today. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, anyway. First I, Corinthians 2, yeah. Paul said, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought 
uh, thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him so also no one comprehends the thoughts of god except the spirit of god now he goes on to say this we have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might understand the things freely given to us by god and we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom but taught by the spirit interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual because the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of god they are folly to him and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned so joel um this this is what we kind of left with last week when we were talking about first john chapter 2 John said, you've got this this anointing that you are constantly plugged into. Even if you don't feel like it all the time, you are plugged into it. It's a constant flow. The Spirit doesn't come and go. He doesn't show up and then, you know, come back later and none of that stuff. You've got this anointing that abides in you at all times, and that anointing from the Spirit will be your teacher if you'll allow it to, if you'll allow that anointing to teach you. Uh, Paul is saying something not uh, perhaps exactly the same way that John was, but he's he's uh, perhaps along the, a similar parallel um, where he says that uh, when he when he says the natural man or the natural person does not accept the things of God or the uh, the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness to him, uh, he's not able to to understand them uh, because they're spiritually discerned. I don't think he's just referring to people who aren't saved. I I, I think there are people who sometimes easily get caught up. In, in, in the mental aspects of trying to wrap their minds around God, fleshly uh, approaches sometimes, and, and th- those things will not be understood. We'll be spinning our wheels. If, if, we, if we just simply think that trying to understand the Bible better and interpret the Bible better, if we think that's our goal, then I, I think we're in for a big disappointment. <laughs> hmm. Nobody's figured it out yet after all these uh, centuries. Um, so the point here is, this stuff that Paul is talking about with the Spirit of God. He revealed things to us through the Spirit. That's not to bash the Bible, but look, what, what concerns me, Joel, is this. You can chime in here in a minute and, and tell me if, if you feel differently about it. It's okay. Um, I don't care how sunny or rainy it is outside. Um, Jesus said that he was going to send someone after he departed from the earth as a man, and, and that person, of course, was the Holy Spirit. From what I hear sometimes in today's Christianity, it's as if the Bible replaced the Holy Spirit, and that is a concern to me. Uh, As much as we appreciate these writings, as much as we appreciate what we call the Bible, um, and we've repeated that over and over again, if you haven't listened to us for the past 18 and a half years, (laughs) you, you know how we feel about the scriptures and how we can glean truth from them. Um... Uh, but at the same time, I, I think sometimes we think that the Bible replaced the Holy Spirit, and um, I have a problem with that. What, what, what do you say? Well, I think the thunderstorms later on are going to... No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, because I'm actually um, in, in line with you on that. That's uh, because I know what you're talking about. Um, if... if, if I'm th- I'm putting myself then now in the position of someone who doesn't know us, and who might be wondering what or the, you know these guys are trying to get away from the lead people away from the Bible and lead people away from Christ because you, you're leading people away from the Bible, His truth, His word, and you know that's what's the mindset of some people. And and, and, and let me just interject and say that, that that's obviously not what we're trying to exactly. do. But we are trying to um, direct people, encourage people. Uh, not to diminish the ministry of the Holy Spirit who abides in you. Right, and that's why and that's why I I agree with you because it's the Holy Spirit has really gotten I think unintentionally or or not you know people just ignorantly you know not understanding what they're doing think that if I need an answer to something I just go to the Bible and there's going to be a chapter and a verse that answers my question. And a lot of people do that, and, and please hear me on this, from a natural point of view, from a fleshly, in, in, in a fleshly way, rather than 
uh, relying upon the truth of the Holy Spirit in you. And so, yes, we the, the, the scriptures do reveal some things to us, some truths to us. We can glean some truths from the scriptures. Let's not make that our God, though, because God is our God. Christ is our God. Christ is the one who lives in us, the Holy Spirit, Christ in us. And as, as this verse in Corinthians says, see, we're, we're reading from the Bible here. Uh, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. And I think, I think I'm right along with you on that, that by the natural person, it's not only talking about somebody who is not saved. I used to believe that. Um, but I think that it's a person who's trying to think naturally rather than spiritually, trying to think from a fleshly point of view rather than by the Spirit of God. Uh, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their folly to him. And I think that's why we have... 40,000 different denominations or whatever because two people are trying to naturally discern things instead of spiritually discern for he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discern discerned the person spiritual person judges all things but he is himself judged by no one for who has understood the mind of the Lord as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ and so Hey Joel, can can you share that story that you told me off the air? You don't have to say what the subject oh, was. Oh, yeah, but, uh, well, okay, yeah. I was talking with somebody. This is several years ago about a certain subject, and it doesn't really matter what the subject is. But we, we were in a disagreement on 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 this subject on on this topic. We were in a disagreement on it, and this person told me, "I know that I'm right because I have the mind of Christ." <laughs> and I'm thinking, well. If we're believers, we're in Christ, we both have the mind of Christ, and yet here we are both disagreeing on something that the Scriptures say. And that, that just goes to tell you something. It's Maybe we were both wrong. Maybe both of us had some um, truth to what we were saying. Maybe we were both right in some way. But it's just interesting how we both looked at the same Scriptures and both understand that we have the mind of Christ, and yet we came to completely opposite opinions on something. Uh, so that's why the beauty of this thing, and, and here's something, you know, I brought this up to you before we recorded, but I, I, I do see that there are many, many instances of people um, being called teachers and, and teaching one another, one another in the New Testament epistles, um, but I don't, I don't see that as being against or opposed to what John is saying here, that y you need no one to teach you. Um, because I think w what my the way that I see that is that, like you and I, as we do this podcast, some people might see us as, as teachers. But ultimately, what we say, what we, quote, teach, isn't even, it shouldn't be taken, taken as for, by the listener as the truth. Uh, you need, as a listener, to discern, not naturally, but by the Spirit, if what we're saying <laughs> is the truth. Uh, it, you know, it just you look to the Holy Spirit. Look to that abiding that is in you, uh, the Spirit that abides in you, the anointing that is in you. Um, w we may see these things the same or different. I mean, it doesn't matter, but um, I just know that there are a lot, a lot of people who are listening who might say, but Paul, Paul says God gives some to be teachers. And there's Paul said, I'm, I was given as a teacher, and all these things, uh, many instances of that. And I don't see anything uh, that John is saying as, as being against that, but rather the focus, I think, of what John is saying, again, in 1 John 2, where, we're kind, where we kind of started off here, is that it's the anointing. It's, it's not the teacher that you're going to learn from. It's the Holy Spirit. He is the, he's the teacher. Not that person, not Paul, not Timothy, not John, not me, not Mike Kapler, not anybody that you listen to, but it's, it's ultimately going to be the, the Holy Spirit. And yeah, you may have something to comment about that or maybe not, but um, that was something that I was thinking as uh, we were getting ready to talk about this stuff. Yeah, you know, in Corinthians that we read from here, I mean, Paul talked about things being revealed through the Spirit. The things that you and I have transitioned into over these years, going from a lot of traditional evangelical type of 
whatever teaching was going on wherever we were at that time into this this message of the new covenant of God's grace, this transition that you and I entered into uh, several decades ago now um, and and have grown kind of together, you and I have grown in this this message of, of truth in our understanding of it. It's largely because of the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know how else to say it, Joel, other than it's, it's the Spirit of God who reveals these things to us. Um, sometimes we get them with our minds. I think sometimes we don't because they are spiritually understood or, you know, understood. And, and oftentimes things are misunderstood when it comes to things from the Bible. Uh, nobody's laid claim to having, mar- uh, you know, cornered the market on truth when it comes to understanding the writings in the Bible, but the Holy Spirit is there to, to, you know, Jesus, Jesus forecasted that this Spirit of God would would be there to comfort us, to teach, to lead, to guide, um, and that hasn't changed. The appearance of of what we call the the Bible didn't change any of that. I know some people who think it who think it did. They they literally think. I won't say what particular denomination that I'm thinking of right now, because even within that denomination, there's hundreds of denominations. But I've talked to people who who just felt like when the Bible showed up, abracadabra, magically it just suddenly appeared. No, it didn't. Right. Um, but in any case, they they think that that kind of took the place of, of the Spirit of God. Things changed all of a sudden. The Spirit doesn't work the same way as it did back in uh, the early days of the church. Um, see, I, I don't agree with that. Um, but you can you can honestly disagree that that's okay. I'm just here to uh, try to get people to focus, number one, on the message of Jesus, that he did die, he did rise again, and he did offer eternal life and complete forgiveness for all time for the sins of the world. And if we get our eyes off of that ball, then it, it becomes a problem. But this the Spirit of God who, who has been given to us, um, I think because we are so trained on Bible teaching, <laughs> um, that, this, this is our focus. Um, and, and sometimes, sometimes, I think we miss out on what the Spirit is, is trying to show us. Because I, I can sit here now, Joel, and wonder why why did it take me so long to begin to understand this stuff? And I, I think I, because I was in my own way, I think, um, because the Spirit of God has, has shown so much now over these more recent years than, than I could have ever imagined in my earlier years of my Christian life. So um, if we're going to try to understand all of this with, with the mind, we're, we're going to have problems. Um, but, you know, in, in, in Hebrews um, chapter 8, I'll get this back over to you, Joel. Hebrews chapter eight. The writer of Hebrews was was talking about this 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 new covenant, um, and and it was exp- this. Well, let me jump in here. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds. I will write them on their hearts. They will be. I will be their God. They shall be my people, and they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me. From the least to the greatest of them, I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. So, there, I think there is this place where, because there are so many different voices out there teaching so many different things, because of our, our lack of understanding regarding the writings, eventually we we just need to begin to trust the one who lives in us. That's really the the, the exclamation point on the end of what we're talking about here. I don't know if we're at the, quite at the end, but. I think we've said what we wanted to say here. I think that's what it's all about. It's about not underestimating the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God who abides in you at all times. There's never a time when the Holy Spirit is not in you or with you and is not at work in you. It's just the reality of your 24-7 life. And so you can learn by him, by the Holy Spirit. He is, ultimately, he is your teacher. And if you have a a question, if you have a misunderstanding or or something that you don't understand, whether it's about a scripture or whether it's about who God is. I once, we're going long here, but I had years ago, 
probably in, early in my walk with Christ, I I did not quite understand this the, the Trinity. I did not understand who the Father was, who the Son was, who the Holy Spirit was. I asked for wisdom. I asked for understanding. I didn't get it instantly, but as time went on, it came to me, and that was the Holy Spirit. I, he, he was my teacher. He, he taught me about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm still learning to this day. But I'm just saying that in anything that has to do with your life in Christ, let's not underestimate the Holy Spirit. And in fact, let's lift him up as our teacher and the one who gives us the uh, knowledge and the understanding that we need in our spirit and live from that. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.